So I want to do a little video on route redistribution. So up to this point, I have two different routing domains built out. I have an OSPF routed domain between switch one and switch two, and then I have an EIGRP routed domain between switch one and switch three. So if we take a look at the current OSPF diagram that we have dealt with, we had this all set up in terms of OSPF, and if you remember correctly, when we ran EIGRP, we also set up another link between switch one and switch three. So if we take a look real quick, we can find out the IP addressing information that some of us may have forgotten. I don't know, probably you forgot, but, but not me, definitely not me. So let's take a look at switch one. And actually we can see here, we have show IP EIGRP interface. We can see 313, show run int E 313. So we used 130, 130, 130.1 on this side and then 130, 130, 130.2 30 on the other side. So what we can do, let's update our diagram here. So this was, whoops. 130, 130. 130, 0 slash 30, and we had dot 1 and dot 2. And then we had a loop back over here that was 13, 13, 13, 13 slash 32. But what we did is we summarized that and we sent that out as a slash 24. So here on router 1 or switch 1, 1, what we should be seeing currently, if we go back to the CLI real quick, show IP route EIGRP, we see 13, 13, 13, 0 slash 24. So what we want to do is we say we need full IP reachability between these two domains because a lot of times in, you know, the CCA lab exams, they'll say, you know, at the end of this, you should be able to reach every interface from everywhere within the exam. We'll say that was the case here. We wanted, you know, to be able to ping from loop back zero up here on switch three to 312 down here on switch 12, which if you remember that was 198.18.112.2. Well, what we could do in order to facilitate these communications is here on switch 1, we could come in and say, hey, you know what, we want to take this OSPF and we want to route it into EIGRP. And to do that, we're going to have to leverage redistribution. Now, kind of vice versa, we're also going to have to take EIGRP and we're going to need to redistribute that into OSPF. Well, there are a couple nuances with, with route redistribution within NXOS, and I kind of want to show you guys and make you familiar with them, even if you don't think you might get this on your lab exam. It's definitely something I want you to know for the real world. So let's actually go through and kind of play around with this a little bit and see what we can make happen in terms of redistribution. One of the first things you're going to notice when you redistribute is that we have to start leveraging route maps. There is no more kind of willy-nilly, you know, freestyle route redistribution. We have to control the redistribution through the use of route maps. So if we're going to be doing this redistribution on switch one, again, even if it's just going to be all willy-nilly, we still need a route map. So what I'm going to do here is create two route maps because I, I at least like to have one where I can control OSPF with one and I can control EIGRP with the other. So I'm going to make a route map called EIGRP to OSPF permit 10. And I'm going to do another one, a route map called OSPF to EIGRP permit 10 as well. I'm not going to put anything in them, just blanket permit statements. I'm going to say, hey, anything gets redistributed if we use this route map. And that's exactly what we're saying here. We could put specific match statements in here. We could leverage prefix lists to match specific subnets or host addresses, but we're not gonna go that far. We're just gonna redistribute everything into the process using these two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna say router. Actually, let me see my, I can't even remember my process names. Show run EIGRP, show run OSPF. So I have JSON for OSPF and 101 for EIGRP. Good thing I looked, I wouldn't have been able to guess that. So what we're gonna do, <clears throat> I'm gonna go into router OSPF JSON. We will redistribute EIGRP 101. And again, we have to leverage a route map. So we're gonna say route map. And this one was gonna be EIGRP to OSPF. Cool. We'll also go into router EIGRP 101, and we'll say redistribute OSPF JSON route map OSPF to EIGRP. 
Now, if we look, show run OSPF, show run eEdgeRP, we have our redistribute commands in there. We actually have our redistribute direct command in eEdgeRP as well. So let's actually take that out and say where no redistribute direct route map direct eEdgeRP. All right. And then we will say show run eEdgeRP, and that, lo that looks correct. So now we have is redistributing OSPF into eEdgeRP and redistributing eEdgeRP into OSPF. So let's actually see what is reflected in our routing tables now that we've made these changes. So to do this kind of check, what I want to do is I want to go to switch three. So let's say switch to, well, I thought up arrow was going to be faster than typing it in. Apparently I was wrong. We'll go to three. And I'm going to say show IP route eEdgeRP. So we see a couple things in here. So I'm able to see 12, 12, 12, 12 slash 32, and I'm able to see 12, 12, 12, 112 slash 28. Again, that the actual IP address on that loopback, if you remember correctly, was 12, 12, 12, 120. So these are both external routes, so exactly what we would have figured redistributing something into OSPF. And we can see that we do, in fact, have an administrative distance of 170, which is the external eEdgeRP AD. So all this looks good. Now, what we're missing, though, if you, if you remember correctly, let's go back up here. What we have is, let me paste that back in, this 198.18.112.2 subnet that was the point-to-point -point link between these two guys. So that is not showing up in our routing table up here. And that is, again, this is one of the nuances with NXOS. With iOS, if we had an interface that was actively participating in a routing process, what would happen when we redistributed that routing process into another routing protocol is it would take those interfaces with it. So historically with iOS, we would have been seeing that 198.18.1.12 subnet showing up up here as an external route. But right now, we do not. So again, we, we kind of run into a conundrum where right now we don't have full IP reachability. If I tried from this guy to ping 198.18.112.2, I'm not going to get a response. I don't even have a route to that host. Uh, matter of fact, if I tried to send a ping to something I do have a route for, like 12, 12, 12, 12, I right now am not getting anything back. Okay, because again, if you think about what's happening here, I'm sourcing that from my 130, 130, 132 IP address because that is the closest to the one I'm trying to reach. So I didn't source it. If I source it from my 13, 13, 13, 13, I would imagine I'd get a response out of this guy. So let's try that again from source 13, 13, 13, 13, and hopefully. Yeah, I get a response because this switch one two does have a route because we have done the redistribution. He does have a route back to my loopback. So what we're not currently advertising are these point to point links between the individual routers or 7Ks themselves. So to do that, we need to go back to switch one and redistribute the directly connected interfaces as well. So let's go back. Let me clear this off and we'll pull up the CLI again. <clears throat> switch back. Let's actually switch real quick to VDC switch one two so that you guys can see exactly what's on him. Show IP route OSPF. So we see the, the loop back for switch one, which was already in there as an intra area route. And then we see an external type two route because we redistributed that 13, 13, 13, 0 slash 24 from eEdgeRP. So that's kind of what we expected to see. Again, we don't see 130, 130, 130, 0 one and two, right? The zero slash 30 subnet. So what we want to do is go ahead, let's say show route map. I already have a direct to eEdgeRP route map. Let's actually just, let's blow that away and start over. I use that for the eEdgeRP demo. Let's say no route map. So let's just copy and paste that guy. Direct to eEdgeRP. And then we'll come back and we'll just put it right back in. And again, I'm not gonna, 
I'm not gonna reference anything with it. I'm also gonna do one called direct to OSPF because I'm just, I'm a little bit anal like that where I like to have that control over these things even though I'm leaving them wide open. But at least they're there in case I do need to start filtering. So using those, we'll go into router OSPF JSON and we'll say redistribute direct route map direct to OSPF. Whoops. And then we'll go into router EHRP 101 and do the same thing. We'll call out We'll say redistribute, I don't know why that wasn't in my history. Redistribute direct route map direct to EIGRP. Show run OSPF, do have it in there. And then we'll show run EIGRP. And we do have it in there. So let's go ahead and switch back. And again, the only routes that we were advertising when we did our redistribute OSPF and redistribute EHRP were the routes that we had learned via those protocols. So again, if we said show IP route OSPF, these were the routes that we were redistributing into EHRP before, and show IP route EHRP, this was the route we were redistributing into OSPF. Again, we excluded our directly connected interfaces that were participating in that routing protocol. So if I go back up to VDC switch one, three, and now I say show IP route EHRP. Now we see the 198.18.112.0 slash 24. So again, this is gonna be an external route, so an AD of 170. If I switch back and we go to switch two, and we say show IP route OSPF, now we see the 130, 130, 130, 0 slash 30, again, as an EHRP type two external route. So now I should be able to ping 130, 130, 130.2, and we get a response. I should also be able to ping 13, 13, 13, 13 from a source of my loopback, which was 112, actually, no, 12, 12, 12, 12, and get a response, and we do. So again, now we have full IP reachability within this topology that we had built out using these two different IGPs. So it's just some of the nuances there with route redistribution in an XOS. Again, directly connected interfaces are not gonna be taken just because they're members of a specific routing protocol. So when you redistribute, if you wanna take the directly connected interfaces, you need to do a redistribute direct command. Also, don't forget that we have to use a route map. I mean, you won't forget for long, right? Because when you go to type in your redistribution statement, it's going to give you the little caret symbol and say, hey, you got to have a route map in here. But it is one of those things. It's something that you do have to get used to coming over from iOS where you previously never had to do that before. Thanks for watching.